Hello, I'm sorry I couldn't join you in person today, but it's a great pleasure to speak in celebration of the UK's strong ties with Angola. 40 years ago this month, Angola began its journey as an independent country. The UK was amongst the first countries to recognise its independence. And since the end of the Civil War in 2002, our relationship has gone from strength to strength. This partly reflects significant long-term British investments in Angola's oil, gas sector, which remains so important to Angola's economy today. But the reasons go much deeper. With our vibrant, open economy, the UK has a unique expertise to offer as Angola intensifies its efforts to diversify beyond oil and to increase its competitiveness and economic strength. The UK can also share expertise in key sectors prioritised by the Angolan government, from agriculture to power generation, from financial services to education, and we're increasingly close partners on the international stage. Angola's latest tenure of the United Nations Security Council comes at a time of unprecedented global challenges, from conflict to international terrorism. Angola rightly is pursuing its own perspectives and priorities, but it is also generously offering the world the benefits of its unique experience, particularly in building and maintaining peace. Those benefits could extend well beyond the Great Lakes region, where Angola currently uh, chairs the International Conference on the Great Lakes region, a very valuable role. Angola is also extending its positive influence through its impressive support for international conventions, from the Chemical Weapons Convention to the Biological Weapons and Toxins Convention. Our joint work with Angola on the UN voluntary principles, on security and human rights for the extractive industry is being extended as we support Angola in its chairmanship of the equally important and vital Kimberley process. But I believe that times of challenge are also times of opportunity. So I'm delighted that the scope of the new partnership between us increases day by day. We have a stream of major business delegations visiting Angola over the coming months. A new UK Chamber of Commerce will be launched soon. And in 2016, we'll see a renewed commitment to the UK high-level engagement in Angola. I look forward to visiting Angola in the new year. It will be a fantastic opportunity to strengthen our ties at a time when Angola is playing an increasingly important role in shaping Africa's future. And if the progress that has been made over the last 40 years is anything to go by, I know we can look forward to exciting times ahead.